Oh, hi. Let's talk about my favorite big champagne producers. All right, so let's talk about my, um, my favorite champagne producers, um, the big champagne producers, I guess the ones that are considered um, negotiants, right? So um, I'm gonna be doing a video soon on growers, my favorite grower champagnes, and grower champagnes mean the people who actually grow the grapes and produce the wines from those grapes. A lot of the big brands that you see on the shelves uh, and we're gonna talk on, about right here are um, negotiants, right? So they gather grapes from lots of different sources and blend them into a, a house style. Um, I'm going to give you my five favorite producer, um, the, the favorite producers or big brands. One uh, additional one that is just heads above um, all champagne wines, in my opinion, but it's expensive. And then um, I'll give you a couple of others to consider, right? Those that are not in my top five, but I do enjoy. So. I, I'm not, I, you know, I'm going to start with this, the Vouv Clicquot. I, you know, this, um, they're masters at marketing. Um, they are, at some times it's considered sort of like a basic champagne and that if you're drinking that, um, you know, you're not really uh, pushing the envelope. But every time I have that wine, I enjoy it more and more. So that is absolutely one that is on the list. Um, I should say before I go through the next four is when I'm when I'm I'm talking usually about the base um, wines, right? Not any of the special cuvées that maybe uh, you know go get really pricey. So anything that we're talking about here is going to generally be seventy-five and less. Okay, uh, number two, Bill Carr Samon. Uh, they have their rosés generally a little pricier than their um, than their their regular brut wine, but just amazing. Um, amazing producer. Uh, I've had a number of their uh, wines at different times. Always, always a, a crowd pleaser, and um, and they seem like they're really good people. You, you should give um, you know give them some follows on Instagram. Um, shoot, I'll, I'll put his I'll put the uh, the the handle right down here so you can follow it. It's kind of got a funny funny name. Uh, number three on this list is Canard Duchesne. I don't know if it's because we had it multiple times when we were in Paris, you know, just sitting um, in our room overlooking, a, you know, a nice uh, garden, <clears throat> um, eating some cheese. But Canard Duchesne, uh, both the regular Brut and the Brut Rosé, I've had both uh, really, really uh, lovely, lovely wines. Uh, number four, Lanson. Um, their base champagne, uh, again, I don't know if this is because my experience when I had years ago, I was flying back and forth to London a lot. I had status on Virgin Atlantic, and that was the champagne that you always were greeted with on your um, on each flight. Um, but again, you can't beat the uh, Lanson Black Label, you know, at that price uh, for for uh, for champagne. And um, it's number five, I actually now that I think I can't count. There are going to be six on this list. Number five is Paul Roger. Um, they do a, a Winston Churchill champagne, the Paul Roger Winston Churchill, which is if you're investing in champagne, vintage champagne, you should buy that one. But their base version, Paul Roger, had it a number of times, had it with Christmas Eve dinner um, once while we were out at a great restaurant in Southampton. Just amazing, amazing wine. Last but not least, and you saw this in my in one of my videos recently when we were away celebrating our um, uh, renewing our vows with my wife and I, we had a, a Boulanger. Uh, Grand Cuvée, and um, that is just, um, it's a little bit of a, of a bigger style, a little more weight on the palate, uh, not necessarily as sharp and acidic as some of the champagnes that, you know, I've touched on right now, but Boulanger is, is always, uh, always a favorite, and when you consider the quality that you get for like $60, $65 in that bottle of champagne, I still think that that almost, you know, dollar for dollar might be the best value uh, around. Now, at the beginning, I said I'm going to give you a special wine that like if you're, again, I'm talking right now at the $75 and less, but if you have $300, $275, if you're lucky to spend on a, just a, a wine that will blow your mind, you should go get yourself a bottle of the Krug. 
uh, Grand Krug, Grand Krug, uh, bleh, Krug, Grand Cuvée. Um, these wines are just like nothing else that I've ever experienced uh, in champagne or sparkling wine for that matter. Um, you know, just the weight, the depth, the the amount of like different flavor notes that you get both on the nose and, and on the palate is just is just amazing. My wife and I did a, we did this like special champagne tasting at Gordon's Wine and Liquors in Waltham years and years ago. I want to say we had to buy tickets, right? It was in their classroom. But I mean, this was, I'm going to, I'm taking a break in the middle of this video. I normally don't do this, but I'm going to ask you to, you know, subscribe if you like what you're seeing here. 97.7% of you that are watching are not subscribed. So it would really mean a lot to me if you hit that button. And you know what? If you want to keep up with all of uh, the happenings on the channel, hit that little reminder bell. Tasting Krug and Dom Perignon and Moet and Chandon and Clicquot and maybe Clicquot Grand Dame. And there was like some serious, serious wines in there. But the, the Krug Grand Cuvée was just, I mean, there was nothing else that even could touch it in that room. It's probably part of the reason I don't have Dom Perignon on this list because, you know, I, I tasted it. You know, I didn't find it that much better than the regular Moet and Chandon, which is not one of my favorites, which is why it's not on this list. I mean, you may love it. You know, you, you, it's something that I wouldn't um, turn down, right? I still buy it every now and then, but again, not one of my, uh, my favorite six. I was going to say five, but as you know, I can't count. Um, one other brand to consider that was tough for me not to include, you know, in that primary six is uh, Ruinar. Um, their, their wines, uh, first, they have great bottle shapes, right? Their bottles are, are very attractive and their wines are what I find a little more delicate. They're lovely wines, but I don't tend to gravitate towards them when we're drinking champagne. So, um, hey, I'd love to know what you guys think. Um, you know, what are your favorite big, uh, champagne producers? Did I miss any? Do you disagree? Do you think this is garbage? You know, like, what, what are your thoughts? I'd love to hear about it in the comments, and I look forward to uh, talking to you soon. And have a happy holidays and New Year season.